In the name of Jesus, please be seated. In the book of Revelation, at the opening of chapter 14, we hear again of the 144,000, those 144,000 that we'll hear about on November 1st on All Saints Day. In this case, they are singing a new song in the heavens. And what a beautiful vision of John as those who are redeemed, bought back by the blood of the Lamb, justified by the righteousness of Christ, declared to be innocent, singing the new song, a song that is placed into their mouth so that there is no lie in their mouths, only truth, only singing to God and to the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. And then the angel comes. The angel comes with the eternal gospel, a gospel that was there before the foundation of creation, the gospel which continues to be here in our present day and will go on into the future, proclaimed to all who dwell on earth the work of the promised seed, the Messiah, the Christ, our Lord Jesus, so that all may give glory to God. Wouldn't you like to be there now instead of in this hall of death, breathing this poisoned air in the midst of dark despair? And yet here we are, the church militant in this dark and dying world, feebly struggling here in the trenches, looking at the 144,000 gathered around Christ. Here we fight the good fight with all our might, but it never seems to be enough. In their mouths, there is no lie, but what comes from ours? Oh, the struggles we face. From our mouths come blessings and curses with our tongues made by the Creator to bless Him. And yet with these tongues, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. And then we curse God himself. It's so easy at this time of year, in this election year, with an endless onslaught of accusation against candidates who betray one another, slander one another, hurt each other's reputation for what? Public office an office which should be held in high regard, which we should honor, and yet which is dishonored by their words. And we are no better. For who doesn't have a word that they wish they could have taken back this week? A word said in anger, a word said in haste, a joke that reveals the darkness of our own hearts, a word spoken behind closed doors about those that we should love, those that we should honor, but instead we've slandered them and hurt their reputation. With the mouth, we worship the Lord as he opens our lips, and yet with this same mouth, we curse our neighbors. Hurting others with words is not our only struggle. No, we face an endless onslaught, it seems, of slavery to our sins. Oh, we've never been enslaved to anyone, we say with the Jews gathered around Jesus, and yet it is not true. For we have been enslaved from the moment that Adam stood idly by looking at Eve, eating from the fruit 
of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, adding her amen to Satan's words. And then Adam adds his. Take and eat, he does. And eating, he dies. Adam and Eve have destined us all then to slavery, to our desires, to our passions, to our sin, to our corruption of the flesh. And what we then need is a true reformation, a reformation of ourselves, a reformation that brings true justification and life in Christ. And so Jesus bids us today to repent. For it wasn't just the church during Luther's time that needed reformation. We need it too. The law which brings the inbred sin to light becomes the high-powered compound microscope bringing into focus just how deeply corrupted we happen to be, how enslaved we truly are. But then along comes our Lord Jesus Christ with his eternal gospel, freeing us from our words, freeing us from the desires and sins of the flesh, freeing us from our laws and from our words spoken in haste. For he is the word made flesh, telling to us, abide in my word and you will know the truth. You will know me and I will set you free. And the truth is that Jesus taking on human flesh, bound himself as a slave for you, bound himself to the cross, to your sins for you, paid the redemption price to buy you back from slavery by, sed by shedding his holy, precious blood, by giving to you his innocent suffering and death. And for what? for slaves, for creatures that he created. But he does so willingly and lovingly, binding himself to you. And then his mouth is bound by death as he breathes his last and he's laid into your tomb, the slave's tomb only to come forth on the day of the resurrection to reveal the truth that he is freed from death, that he is freed from sins, that he is freed from slavery to the devil, and he has freed you. And now we abide in his word. We remain in it. We, we live in it. We're freed by it. One of the great blessings of this last week was the number of times that I was able to proclaim a clear conscience and free people from their sins in individual confession and absolution. A powerful moment as those who are enslaved by sin, who are suffering because of it, who mourn over it, who see no out for it, come and they hear Christ's proclamation. But first, the confession. Then the confession of faith. Do you believe my forgiveness is Christ's forgiveness? Do you believe my proclamation of the forgiveness of sins is in fact Christ's freeing work on the cross, his freeing work rising forth from the grave? 
And the response of faith, yes. And then let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That was peace for Luther. That is peace for you no longer struggling against the desires of the flesh, no longer struggling because of the conscience, feeling guilty and afflicted, sins forgiven, freedom proclaimed, the work of Christ Jesus for you. That's the heart of the Reformation. That's the eternal gospel coming down from heaven. That's true justification preached into your ears, confessed through your mouth, so that you can sing this day, so that you can add your voice with the 144,000 in a new song, a true song, one that you can praise Christ to Jesus the Lamb, in his kingdom that shall have no end. Thanks be to God in Christ Jesus. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.